You would know how to do it. <laughs> the audience people. I'm look, yeah. he's gonna bug me until I work out. Okay. Are you gonna sit there and heckle us? Huh? Are you gonna sit there and heckle us? No. I do you like see you visible. Yeah. Oh, as long as you oh. stay in front of the people. Don't go over there. I say more shadows. Oh, I, 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 I will stand in front yeah, of Tyler. I feel like 10 a.m. I will stand in front of Tyler. Yeah, I feel like 10 a.m. I think so. Yeah, a little bit. I feel the most comfortable. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. How does this always end up? I'm always in the spot every time. Well, are we turning this into a roast panel? Are we turning this into a roast panel? Oh, I love the roast panel. No, I'll be too open to that. That'll be too easy for you guys with me. All right. Well, let's start the show. All right. Yeah, all right. Mike's on for yeah. those that need it. Hello. Oh, cool. Well, it's not about for those that need it. It's for those that have it. <laughs> well, Flipper doesn't need one. So. <laughs> yep, I'm my own microphone. I mean, it's neither do I, but I will use it and abuse it. Christ. Welcome, welcome. Welcome in, folks. Welcome to the blocky world of Minecraft streaming. We are a bunch of Minecraft streamers here, um, both uh, Minecraft with variety streamers and myself who is dedicated Minecraft. Um, and we're here to talk about various elements of uh, streaming Minecraft as a content creator. Um, my name is Sir Laugh A Lot, everyone calls me Laughy. Um, the main three topics that we're talking about today is we're talking about communities and building uh, communities specifically around the server side of making community servers, building communities, um, the technical element of that as well. Uh, we'll be talking about storytelling as a content creator within Minecraft, both from the role playing side of things and from the world building side as well. And then we'll be talking a bit about modded Minecraft, uh, how it can benefit you as a content creator for quality of life mods, content creation mods, but also your community and just as a play style and your personal enjoyment. And then if we've got time at the end, we'll be opening up to questions. Um, can I get these beautiful panelists to introduce themselves? Hello. Hi, my name is Blue Gaming. I'm a variety content streamer and I I've been streaming for about three years now. I've done Minecraft on and off throughout that three years, and uh, mainly here just talking about like modern Minecraft and stuff like that. So, yeah, look forward to it. Hi, I'm Kai Jammer. I'm a primarily Minecraft streamer, also diversifying in variety. Um, I've been doing Minecraft since very little, probably like 2010. Uh, so, yeah, I've definitely come a long way, and yeah, I do a lot of uh, roleplay stuff. I do a lot of server stuff, multiplayer, MCC. Yeah, it's good fun. Uh, hi, I'm Dawn Fail. If you know me uh, as my VTuber self, Dawn Rose, um, I'm a variety streamer. I stream lots of games, um, mainly JRPG focused, but I do uh, do a little bit of Minecraft here. I'm uh, here today to talk about the more technical side of servers as I uh, <coughs> run a server both for my friends and for a YouTube series I do uh, on a channel called It's Your Friends. Um, so yeah, I'm here to delve into the more technical side as well as a bit of plugins and how you can use uh, Minecraft server to benefit not only you but your streamer, uh, streaming community. Okay. Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Frosty Diana, you can call me Frosty. I uh, probably been playing Minecraft for about 10 to 12 years I think. Um, I play Minecraft like, all the time uh, with my husband. And we have a uh, realm that we um, run together. Uh, and uh, I usually stream Minecraft at least once a week, playing with uh, members of my community, but we also play like off stream all the time as well. Um, we do a lot of like really silly builds and going on adventures and hosting events and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> we like a bit of coding. And <laughs> uh, yeah, so as I said before, my name's Phil Lot. I've been playing Minecraft since back in beta in like 2010, 2011. Um, I've been very heavily involved in the technical side of the game with Redstone. Um, and now that days, I'm generally known as a builder. I play vanilla, I play modded, I do parkour, I do lots and lots of different things. And that's the exciting thing about Minecraft, right? There's so many different facets and elements to enjoy uh, just moving on for years, right? Yep. So the big thing to start with is we're talking about communities. 
Uh, now, Fossey, you, as you said before, you run a community uh, re uh, bedrock realm, yeah? Yes. Uh, community realm for your community, your viewers. Um, tell us a bit about like what that looks like, how that works as a content creator. I suddenly forgot everything that I had to say. <laughs> um, so like I said, my husband and I run the realm. Um, and it is a uh, bedrock. That way uh, a lot more of like the community can play with us from console, mobile, uh, PC. Um, it just like leaves more options open. It really depends on uh, what you want to do specifically, whether you want to have a realm or a server or something like that to play um, like with people as a community. But for me, I chose to have a realm for that reason. Um, so uh, we have been having regular events um, over on the realm with uh, members of our Discord, um, like festivals and fun like PvP things, stuff like that. Um, uh, like I mentioned, it is cross-platform, so people can join even from their mobile if they want to. Um, I think it's important to have like a clear like rules and stuff like that if you're going to have a realm or a server um, it's important to um, like keep an eye on uh, your members and stuff like that uh, for me it's really important that I have a discord as like the main hub where my uh, Minecraft community um, actually like chats all the time and share stuff, ask questions, use the voice chats and hang out and do things um, yeah just to let people know things all the time and uh, for me, I'm like always sharing uh, screenshots for the stuff that we've been up to, the builds that things have been, uh, people have been working on over on the realm. Uh, yeah, just sharing with everyone all the things that everyone been, uh, has been up to and uh, getting other people involved in doing that as well. Um, for me personally, I have like some uh, like signage and stuff around the realm. We don't have many rules, it's pretty simple, it's pretty much just. Um, like no stealing or uh, destroying other people's property, that's pretty much it. Um, I have usually got fire spread and PvP turned off in the realm except for, for um, special events. Um, just because when you are streaming, um, there is like obviously <laughs> like an element of danger that somebody, anybody could come in. And yeah, generally speaking, I usually only invite people who become a member of my Discord. But um, every now and then I will invite somebody on the stream. So. There, there is an element of danger there when you do that sort of thing. So that's something to think about whether or not that's something you are willing to do or if you want to have like a timer maybe on the amount of time someone's actually been around in your community before you invite them to a realm or your server. Um, another thing I want to mention is, um, so I mentioned uh, Discord, obviously that's like the main hub I use for all of my gaming and art and stuff that I do, um, but especially the Minecraft and uh, the other one being social media. So um, yeah, again, uh, sharing all of the, like, the, the same things I share in the Discord, really like news, um, screenshots of stuff, like tagging people that play on the realm and things like that. Um, it, they're really good ways to like build your community and interact with them. And um, people just really like uh, seeing, like, you know, that you've shared, um, and talked about things that they've worked on in the realm or they've built. Doesn't matter what it is, in my realm we have like a giant floating bee house, we've got a panda house, we, there's like a hamburger sitting somewhere, you know, uh, just a giant hamburger for no good reason. Um, so, you know, anything, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be the most amazing thing that anyone's ever built, um, but just, yeah, organising things like that, doing things together as a community is a big thing as well like the events or just going on an adventure even if it's just to like look for some iron or something like that if we've run out at our main house um but yeah just doing fun things together really um is the number one way that i build my own community uh over on my minecraft realm awesome now that's very much the social side of running a server um which is very very nice to hear i personally I only really do stuff with other content creators and <laughs> do my own like community yeah. servers. But uh, so Dawn, you have a lot of experience on the technical side of running servers and stuff. What does that kind of uh, relate to for you? Uh, yeah, so I'm. I do think well, um, the bedrock version of Minecraft has improved like a lot over the recent years, especially over the pandemic period. Um, I've been sort of like since I've been playing Minecraft since beta. Uh, I'm 
a slight Java uh, purist over here. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've sort of run servers on and off for quite a long time, like starting with Hamachi back in the day, um, attempting and failing to port forward on my parents' internet. Um, uh, but these days I've tried using a Realm and it, well, it can be a little bit pricey at times when you, you're just doing it, paying for it by yourself. So I personally use a server host um, called Shopbike, which is, uh, I believe is based here in Australia and it's very affordable starting from $2.50 to a very basic server. So I run a purely vanilla server um, with some quality of live plugins. So um, I use Spigot with a slash paper, which used to be Bucket. So basically that's like a big hub of all these different technical plugins, but purely for my server um, that I run both for YouTube and my friends. Um, I just use a few quality of life plugins. So one I use is Essentials, which basically gives you um, sort of spawn points that you can set so people don't just spawn randomly if they've lost their bed. Um, a lot of different commands that you can just change the weather if anyone needs sort of like a certain type of weather or weather type, so like rain, thunder, sun, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, it, it vastly improves the quality of life uh, that the basic Minecraft commands don't have. And there's, you know, a whole bunch uh, that you can, you know, search up on the page. And um, another one I use is MV Worlds, which basically is extremely helpful uh, for a server that you want to build from the ground up and have different areas, I suppose. So say, this might be a bit grandiose, but say you want to survive a world, you want to create a world, you want a mini game world. Um, MV Worlds helps that which basically allows you to create several worlds within your Minecraft server just through a couple of simple commands. And the tutorial and the Discord server for that is very helpful. They'll answer your questions pretty much straight away. Um, and on addition to that, you can get um, there's several like add-on plugins for that. Um, one of which is MV portals, which basically, so you got your nether portals. Instead of sending that to the nether, you, you can set both that and potentially end portals as well to those other worlds so you can make your server look all fancy and stuff with portals to your different worlds. And you don't just uh, need to use Oblivion, uh, Oblivion? Obsidian um, and light it. You can use water, you can use lava, you can just have air. You can just have a blank portal. And uh, as long as you set it to the specific dimensions of your portal, and then you're good to go. Um, I also use a little bit of world edit here and there. I don't try to use it too much in my server. That's a whole different ball game on the technical side um, of like terraforming your own world and creating giant balls in the sky and out of whatever materials you, materials you want. So I think for your Minecraft server, I think it's important to know which way you're going, whether you want it to be a pure vanilla server or if you want some mods or uh, plugins to change different things you can have like uh, different roles um, different permissions you can have all sorts of uh, like locked chests if you don't want people taking your stuff you can have currency within your server if you want to set up shops and all that so it's important to um, decide what sort of server you want uh, for whether it just be for the content creators, your streaming community, or even uh, just yourself to mess around on. And I think that's very important because it'll really shape the server what you decide to do on the technical side and the back end. So uh, yeah, I think I think that's a bit about the technical side. If you want to ask me more about that, I'll try and remember more things off the top <laughs> of my head uh, in the Twitch Pals room, which is just down that way. All right, brilliant. Well We've heard from two wonderfully experienced people regarding Minecraft communities and community building. Um, I've learned some new things, which is very cool. I uh, hope you guys have taken some stuff away from that as well. Uh, now we're going to move on to the storytelling side of content creation and Minecraft streaming. Uh, now I know Kai, you have experience on the roleplay side of things. Can you tell us a bit about that? I do have a little bit of that. Along with like uh, more recently the QSMP or the Dream SMP in the past, I've tried to do a bit of like role play and overall story uh, with other creators and that. 
Unfortunately, 90% of the time they all go dark for a bit and I don't get to do what I want to do, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, you basically um, you can kind of have like a big um, list of things you kind of want to hit. Uh, so story points, um, you want to hit through different streams. So whether or not that be, uh, I got killed at one point on a server and I lost all my stuff and they, um, a specific person took the most valuable thing I had, which I think at the time was like a stupid piece of leaf. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you exactly why I did that, but uh, I promise it made sense in the overarching story, but never got to that point. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's great. And then you get to also expand on that and create big builds and stuff. I know you uh, use a lot of your like single player worlds and then your builds and that to create a story through that. Kind of basically the same thing. So. Um, referencing Dreamers MP again, um, with them making their own nations and that, um, having certain bits in the world be, um, to your character be like um, very significant to them, um, and then losing certain point, uh, like losing them or giving them to certain people and their betrayal and all that. It's basically just taking what you see in movies and TV shows and then just putting it in a blocky world and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing I've ever built. White bread. White bread. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, um, but yeah, no. Uh, then also the aspect of like um, using. Oh uh, yeah, we go into single player worlds and kind of test things out. I've done that quite a few times, um, seeing kind of what works, what doesn't, um, whether or not. I think we did a thing where, off, like jumping off a diving board and like someone got killed in lava, like from going to like the thing wasn't like deep enough and all that, and it completely screwed up the stream. It was extremely scuffed, it was good fun. Um, but yeah, taking inspiration from IRL things, so um, we did a lot of stuff with the French, Re oh, not French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution and that. Um, and yeah, that kind of things, I guess, yeah. Yeah, well, so, and now I'm going to chime in on this part for myself, because I love to do lots of world building. Through, uh, through my worlds, through my builds. Um, so for instance, here we've got like a cute little bakery. Um, there, there's the a building. Little, yeah. um, and there's, you, you know, you, you think about the elements of a build that are logical. So if I want to be doing all the baking on the top on the top shelf, then we need to get the flour up there. They've got a little bit of a pulley to add some extra details. Um, but I love to tell stories through the game, um, and as opposed to doing the role side thing, the role play side of things, for me it's more about what goes into the world. Thinking about the characters who live there, what happens, are there any rivalries between things? I've started building like this uh, mysterious magical obelisk, and that has had me thinking, okay, maybe there's a cult to the obelisk, maybe in some people's houses we will find like some hidden robes or a secret compartment or a tunnel system. Um, and it one helps hugely elevate your builds because you come up with really good details that makes your build feel really lived in. Um, and it also adds details that people wouldn't think to do. There's, um, there's a lot of things that people will do to try and add detail, which I refer to more as set dressing, where it's kind of like when you go to like a holiday house in the beach and they've just got like shells on the wall. Um, if there's actually rhyme and reason behind all of the details you put into your build, it elevates it 100% and makes it so much better. And as a content creator, it's so fun to build these stories with your world. Um, I remember I built this bridge that I call the Spike Bridge, which is just, I've got two, two rival towns on either side, very Romeo and Juliet, um, and one of them built a bridge specifically at a different size to the other town's roads, just to mess with them. And it's, I was cackling like a goblin the whole time I was building it. It was so much fun. Uh, and my community really gets behind and really enjoys that side of things as well. Um, Sorry, I just... <laughs> I just called that out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> Exceptionality. Um, yeah, what can I say? I'm accident prone. So now uh, we're just going to move on to a little bit talking about modern Minecraft, about... Um, the technical side of things as a content creator, how it can help you uh, as a content creator, how it can help your um, your community, and also how it can just help your play style, right? Now, Blue, you've done quite a bit of modded stuff, right? So can yeah. you talk to us a bit about that? So in terms of modded Minecraft and stuff like that for myself, I have done a various amount of different things, um, which range from uh, 
crowd control stuff, which I've done with a, my community, which you can actually kind of see um, clip of right now. It's where my community would be able to use channel points to redeem certain effects and everything like that on stream, which made the game so, so much harder to try okay, to beat. Okay, utter chaos. Yeah, utter chaos, and I love it. I thrive on it. It is just so much fun, and God, I look like a maniac. Uh, <laughs> you are a maniac. I am, I love it. Anyway, point B. Um, yeah, so stuff with like crowd control, it's such a great way to get your community involved and stuff like that. And like they get to influence the game that you're playing as well. And you know, they can sometimes make it utter nightmares <coughs> for you, like when they spawn in like five withers and two ender dragons, but you know, you work with what you can, I guess. Um, and then there's other times with like mod packs and stuff like that, which can very much change up how you play Minecraft and how. Uh, your play style is with that game. Like I've got one mod pack that I play on streams called Explore Till You Drop, uh, which has been one of the more fun mod packs that I've played on stream. It changes up, it gives you like quests and everything to do, it gives you more loot varied, uh, different storyline structures you can explore. Like there is so much you can change up with Minecraft, whether that be little changes like you know, making it so that when you punch the bottom block of a tree, the whole tree comes down instead of having to mine the entire thing. Or, like, there's just there's so much varied stuff you can do with modern Minecraft, and you're only really limited by well, what you can find and stuff like that. Because if you run into a point where the game becomes a bit stale for yourself at times, like I had found originally, because um, I didn't really have many people play with it at first. Um, you know, you can do stuff to change up the game, bring in some new elements, and just make it so much more fun. And you can even tie that into like storytelling and stuff um, with like certain mods and just yeah, it's really been helpful for the community and stuff and getting engagement, and as well as just like making the streams more entertaining to watch. I'm rambling. <laughs> Sorry, that's the most devastating moment. Sorry about that. Didn't want to bring up any past trauma. Top Except ten, top ten anime deaths. <laughs> I was gonna say with the uh, modding, I just wanted to call the ad. Yeah, no, I will say it adds a lot of like story aspects and that. You can add like add other characters and all that, and people you can interact with. Instead of just the villagers being villagers, you can give them names, personality, all that kind of stuff. Data packs to make it more yeah. expansive and everything. And you can even like bring in certain mods, like Hero Ride, for example. I did that with a friend, and that was yeah. yeah. It's not real. yeah. That's he's what been saying. So many yeah, he's been on <laughs> Bring back those patch notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you can create so much story with mods and stuff as well, like custom weapons that have certain features or you know certain attachments and spells and everything. It's just it's, it's endless, really. You can have everything from Harry Potter based to I've even seen Dragon Ball Z inspired Minecraft mods and it's. I will ram one all day. I'll pass <laughs> on. Yeah. I, I, I love to play modern as well. I so I play both vanilla and modern, um, both three days a week, and I love playing very heavily modern packs. But even in my vanilla packs, I my vanilla worlds, I still have a few mods. Um, often on the content creation side, so there's a really wonderful mod called Tweakaroo that allows you to um, essentially pull yourself out of your body in free cam uh, and like. Be like you're in spectator mode, but you still are grounded to a body. If a zombie comes up and kills you, it'll still like do that, right? And it's really good as a content creator to show off what you're doing. Um, having a zoom mod is really nice as a content creator, um, as well as things like dynamic lighting, where if you're holding a torch and you're in the dark, it's got to keep things light, which is just really nice to help in a dynamic and immersive way, keep your stream being able to actually see what's going on, right? If you're in night or down in caves and you don't have a lot of lighting. Um, I was going to say as well, um, uh, with the modding thing, it's pretty uh, good to mention Optifine is- yes. uh, Sorry, the, I forgot yeah, to mention that. Your Optifine is the thing you need to get. It's not even that hard to even install, you just press two buttons, like three buttons and then you install it and then you get everything from dynamic and lines. And really got to interrupt here and say, do not use Optifine. Uh, they oh. are rather shady and don't work with a lot of other mods. Oh, uh, right. I take back everything I said. <laughs> wasn't aware of that. My so they use cool, uh, but... sodium and stuff like that. In That's stuff. also an option, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Uh, I've been lied to. Sodium and rubidium, like pure fortune. Ah, but yes. So here we have our beautiful, beautiful QR codes. Please, please scan us. Where? 
I'm so desperate. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they disappear too quickly, they are all up in the Twitch Pals room as well. Oh, they'll be up there. Yes, yes absolutely. The yeah. um, but this has been a wonderful panel talking about various elements. We could talk for all 700 different panels and different topics. Minecraft and Minecraft streaming is such a broad and diverse topic with so much in it. And we've already heard lots of different takes on just three small, well, not small topics, but wide uh, topics. Three small takes on wide topics, right? So uh, most of us will be, uh, immediately after this, will be in the uh, Twitch Pals stream Perth room if you are interested. I know Frosty will be going back to her stall at uh, smudged Sharpie, uh, what stall number is it? <laughs> it's number 852. I'm in the artist family, kind of near the cafes and the toilets at the back. You'll see all the frogs there, and I do actually have two Minecraft uh, clay pieces that are still up there. Let's get them all <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like the B52s, but uh, better. Um, <laughs> And yes, yeah, so I have been Sir Laugh-a-Lot MC, um, you can all call me Laughy, this has been the wonderful blooper game, the voracious Kai Jamo, the enthusiastic Dawnfire, Maybe and the, the intimidating, <laughs> the Frosted Donut. And thank you just so much for being here for this panel, it's been really fun just talking to you, just info dumping about our loves and our interests of the wonderful thing that is Minecraft and streaming, so I hope you guys have a Wonderful, wonderful day. I hope to, um, we don't really have time to do any questions, but please, please come visit us in the Twitch Pals room. We will absolutely be happy to talk your ears off um, and <laughs> answer any questions you might have, or just to have a chat. I know Blue has Minecraft up on his computer over there, so. Yeah, and yeah. he broke it. <laughs> the fact that turning off shaders broke it, broke your game is more on your setup than it is. Yeah, for a point. Skill it's issue. Oh, you lost. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, Issue. But yes, thank you guys yes. so much, um, and have an amazing day, uh, we had an awesome day yesterday at the con, it's a really, really just awesome event, so have a look around, watch a lot of panels, and come visit us, because we're pleased so, so very alone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all, we love you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Drop my <mic. laughs> <laughs> please, please do. But it's fun. Right. It's really funny. All right. <laughs> that went. That was good. That was good. Oh, nice. Nice. So I could, I could so Look at us all right now. So we didn't, we didn't even oh, so have to stop anyone that much. <laughs>